Hi everybody, welcome to this uh, massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the brief of different uh, solid fluid operations. In this lecture, we will uh, try to learn something about characteristics of single particle. So, here we will learn what is the properties of particle, what is the shape of the particle, what is sphericity, what is aspect ratio and also zeta potential. Sometimes the particles whenever mixed with solid as well as you know that uh, other fluids, you will see that there will be a mixture of solids and the slurry. So, there uh, you will see that properties of the mixture of the solids as well as the properties of the slurry will be changing based on the concentration of the particles which is added to the fluid. So, what will be the uh, effective density or effective viscosity of the slurry that also will be considered here. Also zeta potential is uh, basically the you know uh, measure of the dispersity of the solid particles in a liquid that also to be you know discussed and how to actually measure that zeta potential that will be discussed in this lecture. So, as we know that there are uh, several uh, properties of the particles like shape, size, strength, porosity, zeta potential, particle outline, true density like this. So, all those shapes of this particle or properties of the particles actually affect on flowability of the particle reactivity of the particles whenever these particles will be utilized for you know that reaction then what will be the reactivity of the particles that depends on the size, shape, strength, porosity, zeta potential and also true density of the particle. Flowability basically whenever particles will be transported from one location to another location you will see that the how easy these particles will be you know flowed based on the size of the particles as well as the shape of the particles. Then uh, this uh, properties also affect on the caking, you will see that sometimes the particles whenever it will be depositing at the bottom of the container or whenever the particles will be separating from the mixer of the liquid and solid that means the slurry, you will see that they are uh, one uh, membrane medium or you can say that uh, filter medium that we have discussed in the previous class that is being used. So, whenever the particles will be separated, you will see that on the surface of the filter medium, the particles will be depositing and making a layer of that particles. So, this layer of that particles will be called as cake. So, this formation of the cake, it is called caking. So, this caking formation during that separation of the particles depends on its properties like shape, like size, porosity and true density. Then attrition and friability, it is also one of the important parameter which will be you know affected by the properties of the particle. What is that attrition? Whenever you will see that particles will be interacting with the other particles, there may be a chance to make it a finer uh, one. Because of that high interaction, high collision between the particles because of the high energy, high kinetic energy in a particular device when it is being used for a particular process. So, at that time you will see that particle particle interaction will give you the breakage of the particles. So, that is called attrition. So, this attrition will be depending on the properties of the particle like strength, like what is the size of this particle as well as its shape. Then we are coming to the point adsorption, this adsorption process also affected by the properties of the particle. You will see smaller size particles will give you the better adsorption because it will have more surface area. So, smaller particles will, will give you more surface area, more surface area will give you the better adsorption. Then coming to the mixing, you will see the uniform particles whenever used to you know mix, you will see that homogeneous mixing will be there, whereas uh, different sizes particles whenever it will be mixed, then heterogeneous mixing will be there. Any chemical reactions or any other process will be 
uh, giving the better yield when the homogeneous mixer will be there. That means almost uniform size of the particles mixer will be there. Then segregation that means you have to separate the particles that also depends on the size of the particles and also density. So, if a mixer of that higher density particles with a very lower density particle their segregation will be very easier whereas uniform density particles the segregation will be you know difficult. Also the uh, size of the particles even uh, you know that uh, both the effects both the both the factors okay, will be affecting on this segregation size as well as density. Slurry properties of course the if you add more number of particles or more mass of the particles in a liquid in a certain amount of liquid you will see that there will be formation of slurry and they are slurry concentration if you increase their density will be increased as well as you will see that viscosity of the slurry will be increased. Why? You will see that if you add some powder in a liquid and keep on adding the powder on the liquid you will see that gradually increasing the you know stickiness of the you know mixer uh, in the container that means their viscosity will be increased. So, if you increase the concentration of the particle in a container their viscosity will be increased. So, that is why this slurry properties or slurry viscosity slurry density will be affected by the properties of the particle. Okay. Then coming to that particle shape you will see that there are different types of particles which have different uh, you know uh, shapes. So, particle shape has a considerable impact upon the performance or processing of particulate materials. What are the shapes of the particles generally you know we see some are acicular you will see that that will be needle shaped or rigid type as shown in the picture here and also some will be angular in shape you will see that some angular shape particles will have you know that is will have hard angles okay, as shown in the picture here and also you will see that some particles will be fibrous that means some will be thread like like this non rigid okay, this type of particles. Some will be granular and also blocky that means you know powder type almost powder type, very smaller particles mixture of the small very fine particles will be there. So, that will be called as granular that is irregular shaped particles and then mostly you will see that some regular shape particles that are being used in industry or in a laboratory for performing any processes like spherical particles like cuboid particles, cylindrical cone or cube shape particles these are called regular shape particles. So, sometimes this regular shape particles are being used to you know assess the process uh, in ideally whereas, maximum of the process where the particles are being as the cut catalyst may not be the regular in shape. So, in that case uh, irregular shaped uh, particles is being used as a granular material and there there will be a certain distribution of the particle size. So, within a certain range of the particles that will be considered and what will be the mean for that size distribution that is considered for the assessment. So, we are having that different shapes of the particles which will be impacting on the performance or processing of the particulate materials for a particular process. So, these are the different you know shape of the particles and then areas in which particle shape have an impact already discussed that the reactivity and solubility pharmaceutical activities where the particle shape will be affecting. Then powder flow and handling like drug delivery systems there whenever uh, deliver the you know mixture of the you know drugs as a powder form okay, and it will be flowing through the uh, you know uh, vein or channel you will see that there will be a you know flow resistivity. So, that resistivity depending on the particle shape. Then ceramic center properties you will see that whenever you will see that ceramic filters will be prepared they are of course, the ceramic powder whatever it will be used during that uh, sintering process that depends on the size of the particles as well as shape of the particles okay. and then texture and feel you will see that more finer particles in a food you will see will give you the better texture that means it will be good taste 
you will see that fine grinding or fine you if you if you if you do any uh, uh, food materials which is you know edible uh, if you make it very you know crust or you know fine powder shape you will see that its taste will be different uh, from the you know coarser size food so that is why texture and feel will be affected by the shape of the particle then how that shape factor can be uh, you know analyzed or shape can be analyzed so this shape of the particles can be analyzed by uh, some parameter uh, it will be as like you know aspect ratio sphericity roundness particle outline so these are the some you know uh, parameters by which you can assess what extent of this you know that uh, particle shape whether it is spherical or non spherical uh, whether it is you know that um, elongated or not elongated okay how uh, actually round this particle and what will be the uh, roughness of that surface of the particles that can be assessed by these parameters like aspect ratio this is basically the ratio of breadth to length there will be certain materials what will be the breadth and what will be the length if you have the ratio that will be represented by as an aspect ratio then sphericity sphericity is the most important you know parameter by which you can assess the any performance of the process you know based on this sphericity it is defined basically uh, we will come to that point how that sphericity will be defined it is basically how spherical is the particle that is assessed roundness also how round is the particle okay that can be you know estimated by the roundness factor and then particle outline this is also one of the important uh, you know factor based on which you can assess the performance of the rea uh, reaction or you can say that uh, assessment of the you know performance of any processes in this case degree of roughness of the surface will be assessed by this you know particle outline the size of a particle you will see that the size of a particle of irregular shape is defined in terms of the size of an equivalent sphere you will see that in any industry whenever any solid particles is being used for a particular process like you know that drying either drying either fluidization or reaction as uh, for the catalyst particles there the particle size will not be regular in shape will not be you know always spherical so to assess that performance you have to consider that irregular shape particles into a equivalent shape of a sphere so in that case the size of the particle of a irregular shape is defined in terms of the size of an equivalent sphere so irregular shape particles will be considering a regular shape by considering it is an equivalent to the sphere the particle is represented by a sphere of different size according to the property selected so there whenever that you are considering the equivalent sphere either based on that its surface area or either based on that volume of that equivalent sphere or it is the maximum diameter of the uh, equivalent sphere or other way that will be represented for that equivalent diameter or not that will be assessed so how to find out that equivalent sphere or equivalent diameter of that you know irregular shape particles that will be you know considered now you will see that important size based on which that equivalent a sphere will be considered and based on which you will get the equivalent diameter of the irregular shape particles so there are several way let us consider that a particle which is irregular in shape here as shown in picture here particle now this particle is see here it is not exactly the spherical in shape so what you have to do to consider it as a you know spherical in shape and what will be the equivalent diameter of this particle which is equivalent to a spherical shape so there are several way to consider that equivalent diameter or equivalent size of the particle here there are several ways shown in the picture you will see that uh, here if you consider that maximum length of the equivalent sphere so its you know what will be the equivalent sphere and what will be the maximum length sphere of the same maximum length it will be considered as the equivalent diameter of that particle then you can consider the equivalent diameter based on the sphere of same minimum length like this and you can consider that you know diameter of this irregular shape particles just by equivalencing with the you know sphere of same volume okay 
you can assess that equivalent diameter based on the sphere of same surface area. You can have the diameter equivalent diameter of that particle based on sphere of same weight. You can consider the equivalent diameter of this particle based on considering the sphere that is passing same sheep aperture. Sheep, sheep means what you know that I think you know that what is sheep that is screen or you can say that chaloni we can say that in uh, Hindi. So, there you can uh, say that this is the sheep okay, okay, through which that particles will be going you know down okay, here. So, what will be the aperture here? What is the aperture based on this aperture you know size that equivalent diameter of this irregular shape to be considered. Okay. And then uh, you know equivalent sphere of having uh, you know same sedimentation rate. What will be the rate of sedimentation? That means the same volume or same you know sphere if you consider that having the you know a sedimentation rate or terminal velocity will be the same as that particle you know uh, terminal velocity then what will be the equivalent diameter based on which you have to calculate. So, these are the different way by which you can calculate the equivalent diameter of you know irregular shape particles. Okay. We, will cons we, will, we will show that different uh, type of you know equivalent diameter even in a mixer how to calculate the mean diameter of that equivalent sphere or how to calculate the mean diameter of the particles that is exist in a mixer. So, that will be discussed in the uh, next lecture itself. Then we will have here suppose equivalent diameter based on surface area and volume. So, uh, there it is a irregular shape particles which has the surface area as a p. Now, if you consider the same surface area of the particle which is spherical in shape. That means, here this area a p of this irregular shape particles this will be is equal to a p of equivalent sphere. So, if you, if you if you make equal to this you know surface area of this irregular and that equivalent sphere then you will be having what will be the you know diameter of that you know equivalent sphere that diameter will be considering as the equivalent diameter of this particle which is irregular in shape. Okay. So, here surface equivalent diameter it will be called. So, this is basically d p e s is equal to a p by pi to the power 1 by 2. Why? How it is coming? Because this you know that a p will be equal to what? This a p is equal to a p is equal to what is that? You know uh, I think uh, it is uh, pi pi d p square pi d p square d p is the equivalent particle diameter. So, from which d p e will be equal to what? a p by pi to the power half that means square root of this a p by pi. Okay. So, here in this way you can calculate what will be the surface equivalent diameter. Similarly, if you are considering the volume of this particle as v p and the volume of that equivalent sphere is again equal to this v p, then you will see that v p of that equivalent particle it will be 1 by 6 pi d p equivalent you know cube. So, this v p will be is equal to volume of this you know irregular shape particles. If you uh, make it equal then you will get what will be the d p e based on that you know volume equivalent diameter uh, then you will get that 6 v p by pi to the power 1 by 6 1 by 3. So, here equivalent diameter based on surface area and volume you can easily calculate. Now, you will see that some other way can be you know assessed that you know equivalent diameter of the irregular shape particles. Those are being used in you know uh, microscopy. So, some diameters used in microscopy based on the projection of the shape of the particle. Here you will see that in this picture it is shown that in this uh, shape here irregular shape particles. Now, if you make a circle with area equal to projected area of this particle then you will get what will be the equivalent circle diameter that will be assessed as an or that will be considered as an you know equivalent diameter of this particle. Then another diameter it is called ferrets diameter this is basically you know that 
distance between two tangents on opposite sides of the particle. Okay. Here see irregular shape particles, if you make a tangent at the extreme end of this particle from this side and also from this side and if you make the distance between these two tangents, this diameter or length of this uh, between these two tangents, what is the distance? This distance will be considered as a ferrets diameter. This ferrets diameter is considered in the microscopy. And also you will see that Martin's diameter is also another way to you know assess the equivalent diameter in microscopy. It is basically the length of the line which bisects the particle image. Okay. You see that what is the particle image and if you bisect this image, if you consider that total length is what from the extreme ends of this particle and then what will the half of this length at this point if you join this line of this end of this particle then the distance will be considered as a Martin's diameter. Another is called shear diameter this is basically particle width obtained when an image shearing device will be used there. Okay. There will be a shearing of these two particles and during that shearing point you will see that shearing action and the shearing point if you consider that and at that position at that condition you know how that particles will be located and then what will be the distance between these two you know point as shown in the picture that will be considered as a you know that uh, a shear diameter. Another important properties of the particles that is called projected area. This projected area uh, sometimes considered to assess uh, suppose any flow is you know uh, getting you know diverted by you know the surface of the particles they are you know acting a drag on the particles the pushing of the particles by force. So, they are the stream of the flow over the particles will be you know different. So, you will see that that you know uh, the flow whenever you acting on the surface of the particles to assess that you know drag force on the particles it will be required to you know know what will be the projected area of that particles. Because that drag force or frictional force that will be considered based on that you know projected area. So, there are different type of you know particles with different shapes and if you orient that different shape of that particles in such way that what will be the projected area that can be calculated. Here see that cube if you consider from this side of this cube then what will be the projected area this will be diameter if you consider the diameter the projected area will be d square. Similarly, hemi square particle that projected area will be equal to pi d square by 4. Similarly, for cylinder the projected area will be equal to pi d square by 4 and for cone this projected area will be equal to pi d square by 4 where d is the you know diameter of that base of the cone. Similarly, here if you are considering the cylinder this is uh, you know laid you know horizontally okay. and if you are considering the projection from the front side what will happen it, it will be showing as a you know rectangle uh, as when it, you are considering as a projected uh, view. So, that projected view give you the rectangle and what will be that rectangular area that will be considered b into d as per this diagram and it will be considered as the projected area. Similarly, here semicircular cylinder, here you know hexagon, similarly the square that you can consider what will be the projected area. This will be required later on whenever you are going to assess any uh, process. Uh, there it will be required to you know calculate what will be the projected area and based on which what will be the surface area to be calculated that is why you need to know this you know projected area. Then coming to that aspect ratio the ratio of the width to the height of an image of a solid body is called that aspect ratio. So, aspect ratio if you consider this long you know rod where the diameter of this rod is very small compared to the length of this rod then what should be the aspect ratio this is here diameter by length of this rod whereas length is very very high compared to the diameter. So, that is why aspect ratio will be equal to what you know diameter by length or width by length where width or diameter is very less compared to the length that is why aspect ratio is coming almost equals to 0. Whereas, if you consider this that you know almost spherical in particle 
you will see that here aspect ratio will be equal to 1 almost because here length and diameter will be same. So, that is why aspect ratio will be equal to 1. So, already this aspect ratio will be uh, within the range of that here you will see that 0 to 1. Then another important point it is called sphericity. It is the measure of degree of closeness of the shape of a particle to the perfect spherical particle. This is called sphericity. You have to know, you have to remember this. Why you have to know this sphericity? Because if you are considering the irregular shape particles for assessing the you know performance of the you know process or any you know suppose uh, if you are considering the irregular shape uh, particle then uh, what will be the you know particles uh, you know Reynolds number or particle surface area that particle surface area to be considered based on this you know sphericity. What is the actual uh, uh, you know surface area and what is the spherica how you know uh, what extent of sphere of this or uh, you know closeness of the shape of the particle to the perfect spherical particle that will be considered here as a you know actual you know that size of the particle. So, sphericity actually whether it is coming to that exactly the you know perfect spherical or not that will be considered. So, it is denoted by phi s. So, phi s will be equal to surface area of a sphere that will have the same volume of the particle divided by surface area of the particle. Okay. Now, surface area of the particle A s divided by then A p, but A s to be calculated from the you know same volume of the particle. So, after calculating after simplification you will get this one that is it will be pi to the power 1 by 3 into 6 v p whole to the power 2 by 3 divided by this A p, A p is the surface area of the particle, this is surface area of the particle. So, where V p is the volume of the particle, A p is the surface area of the particle. In this case you have to note it down like if D p is the equivalent diameter of the non spherical particle and V p its volume and S p its surface area, then in another way you can express this sphericity based on this calculation it will come finally that is sphericity as 6 v p by d p into s p. What is v p? v p is the you know volume of the particle, d p is the what is that equivalent diameter of the particle and s p it is the surface area of the particle. So, from which you can get what will be the sphericity. Okay. So, you will see sometimes it will be asked what is the sphericity whether it is 6 v p by d p into s p or d p s p by 6 v p a different way that will be which one is correct that you have to consider. So, it has uh, actually given in gate examination 2002 what how that sphericity can be defined if the d p is the equivalent diameter of a non spherical particle and v p its volume and s p its surface area then what will be the definition of the sphericity or how sphericity can be mathematically expressed. So, by this you can easily express. Example, let us see that for a spherical particle of diameter d okay, and volume of that particle is pi d cube by 6, then a p will be equal to pi d square. So, what will be the sphericity? It will be 1. If you substitute the value of b p, a p here in this equation then you will get sphericity will be equal to 1 for a spherical particle. So, for any spherical particle the sphericity will be equal to 1. So, you have to remember it for a cylindrical particle of diameter d let us is equal to 1 millimeter or centimeter or meter or any unit and length is equal to the same as diameter it will be considered as 1. Then v p will be equal to what? pi d p square l by 4, a p will be equal to what? pi d l into pi d square by 2, okay. a p surface area of the cylinder. Okay. Then what will be the phi s? You have to substitute the value of d that means here l, l and d both are same this is 1 1, then what will be the v p you can easily calculate and what will be the a p then you easily calculate after substitution of v p and a p in this equation again in the definition equation 
that you can easily have this value of phi s will be equal to 0 0.873. So, this is the sphericity of a cylindrical particle of diameter and length if both are same. Now, for a cube of width suppose a any cube of width a then v p will be equal to a cube surface area will be equal to 6 a square then sphericity will be equal to pi by 6 to the power 1 by 3 as per if you substitute there in the equation earlier for that definition of the you know sphericity then you will get finally 0 0.806 ok. So, for a cube of width a the sphericity will be equal to 0 0.806. Similarly, the sphericity phi s of a cuboid whose ratio of length of breadth and height is 1 is to 2 is to 3. That means, here length if it is suppose L and its breadth is 2 times of length and height is 3 times of its length, then in that case what will be the sphericity. So, first of all you have to calculate again what will be the V p volume of the cuboid. So, it will be as like 6 L into 2 L into 3 L. Okay. And then you know that what will be the surface area, surface area will come 2 into 2 L, L into 2 L plus 3 L into L plus 3 L into 2 L. After substitution of this value of length, breadth and height, then you get the sphericity as what is that 0 0.47. I think you understood these things that what will be the sphericity of spherical particle that will be 1, what will be the cylindrical particle of diameter and length if it is same then you will get the 0 0.873, what will be the sphericity of cube of width a that will be equal to 0 0.806. Again what will be the sphericity of a cuboidal shape if its length, breadth and height their ratio it is given or exact amount or exact value of this length, breadth and height is given then you can easily calculate what will be the sphericity. Okay? And in this case you have to remember this point that sphericity of the sphere is greater than sphericity of the cylinder is greater than sphericity of a cube. Okay? So, remember this and uh, as per this calculation we are having this sphericity of sphere is 1, sphericity of cylinder is 0 0.873 and sphericity of cube is as 0 0.806. So, we can write here phi sphere is greater than phi cylinder is greater than phi cube. Okay? So, you have to remember this. Now, some typical values of sphericity given. Okay? like pulverized coal whose sphericity will be within the range of 0 0.56 to 0 0.73, crushed coal whose sphericity will be within a range of 0 0.63 to 0 0.75. Similarly, activated carbon it is given 0 0.70 to 0 0.90. For cement particles the its sphericity is around 0 0.59, PVC powder its sphericity is 0 0.81, calcined alumina or hydrated alumina its value is almost 0 0.85 or 0 0.86, fly ash 0 0.90, sand 0 0.86, even crushed sandstone if you consider its sphericity will be ranging from 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. Okay. Silica gel if you consider what will be the sphericity it will be from 0 0.7 to 0 0.90. Suppose if you are considering the wheat what will be the sphericity of a wheat particle that will be around 0 0.80. Okay. If you are considering that uh, some you know mica flex, what will be the sphericity of that mica flex? It will be 0 0.28. Sometimes you will see that Fischer Tropsy catalyst. In the previous lecture, we were discussing about that some catalyst is being used for production of different hydrocarbons by Fischer Tropsy synthesis in a slurry bubble column reactor. Their catalyst is used. So, what will be the size of the particles? There will be a certain range. This micrometer, maybe you know that. 1 to 100 micrometer or 10 to 120 micrometer. Okay. Now, what will be the sphericity of that particles? The sphericity of that catalyst particles will be around 0 0.58. Okay. Then another important you know shape of this particle which is to be assessed by particle outline. The outline of a particle can provide that information about properties such as surface roughness. Okay, surface roughness. How to then assess that things? Here for calculating the particle outline parameters, this is basically concept by which you can you know assess what will the outline of that particle. Okay, and this concept known as that convex hull perimeter. Okay, so some convex hull perimeter to be used for assessing that particle outline. 
Okay. So, for calculating particle outline parameters, a concept known as the convex hull perimeter to be used. What is that convex hull perimeter? You will see that any regular shape particles will have different corners. Okay. Now, if you go, if you add this corner by some thread, you will see that what will be the you know length of that thread? That thread will be considered as a you know perimeter, but that perimeter will be convex hull perimeter. Whereas, actual perimeter will be you know that here as per shown figure actual perimeter will be here shown as you know red outline, whereas the convex hull perimeter is considering just by joining these you know extreme end corners of this particle. So, this will be considered as convex hull perimeter. Okay convex hull perimeter, whereas actual perimeter is surrounded by at its exact surface okay, of the particle. Okay. So, on determining the convex hull perimeter, parameters based on it can be defined such as convexity, solidity or circularity. So, the shape can be analyzed based on this convexity, solidity and circularity. We have discussed that sphericity, sphericity is also one parameter by which you can you know assess what will be the, the shape of the particle. Here the same things it will be coming as per the same concept, but here it will be considered as a convex hull perimeter instead of that you know surface area or volume of the particle. So, here the convex hull perimeter is one of the important parameter based on which you have to consider you know what will the convexity, what will the solidity, what will the circularity. This convexity is defined as convex hull perimeter by actual perimeter. Solidity is the area bound by actual perimeter by area bound by convex hull perimeter. And then circularity is equal to actual perimeter by perimeter of an equivalent area circle. The most commonly used parameter is actually circularity. Let us have an example. What is the convexity, solidity and circularity of a dice of face of length 1 centimeter. Okay. Here in this say you will see that convexity what is the definition of that convex hull perimeter by actual perimeter. Here since it is the dice of face of length 1 centimeter this is a square you know shape dice face is a square shape. So, here actual perimeter and convex hull perimeter is almost this is same. So, that is why the ratio will be 1. So, convexity will be equal to 1. Whereas, solidity which is defined as area bound by actual perimeter divided by area bound by convex hull perimeter. This is also what is the actual area if its length is 1 centimeter then of course, it will be 1 square. Similarly, what will be the area bound by the convex hull perimeter of the same. So, it will be also 1. So, area bound by actual perimeter divided by area bound by convex hull perimeter it will be 1. Similarly, circularity what is that? This is actual perimeter by perimeter of an equivalent area circle. This is important. Actual perimeter we know that this is 4 centimeter since it is a square surface. And then you have to consider what will be the equivalent area of the circle compared to this square surface area. So, perimeter of an equivalent area circle that you have to calculate. What is the area? This is area is what is what is the area equivalent diameter of the projection area of the circle. Okay. What is that? The equivalent area of the projection area of the circle it will be root over 16 pi root over 16 pi. Here the actual perimeter is equal to 4 centimeter. So, what will be the actual perimeter is what will be the surface area here? What will be the surface area? this will be you know 16 phi. Then what will be the equivalent diameter? It will be root over of 16 pi. Okay. So, here it will become circulatory then 4 by root over 16 pi. So, it will be 1 by root over pi it is coming 0 0.564. Okay. So, see here for a dice of face of length 1 centimeter the convexity what is the solidity what is the circularity. Another important point here size of typical powder products you will see that uh, in a powder in a mixture of particles okay, there will be a certain range of the particle size will be there in the particles. 
there may be from the micrometer to nanometer range. Okay. So, here you will see that some toners, powders, materials their size will be within a certain range here 1 to 10 micrometer. Some example like electronic material, photographic emulsions, magnetic and other pigments whose size will be within a range of 10 to the power minus 1 to you know that 1 micrometer. And then fumed silica, metal catalyst, carbon blacks, organic pigments the size range will be 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 1 micrometer. Similarly, here pelleted products, industrial chemicals, crystalline materials whose size range will be 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 5 micrometer. Granular fertilizers, herbicides, fungicides within a range of 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 4 micrometer. So, here detergents also you I think use. So, these are granulated materials. So, that will be a size within a range of you know 100 to 1000 micrometer. Similarly, you will see that powdered in the chemicals like powdered sugars, flour like that their particle size will be within a you know 10 to you know 100 micrometer. Okay. So, you are getting the different powders we will be also discussing about this powder later on that mixer how to calculate the mean diameter of this particle though uh, it will have the mixer of different sizes particles. Okay. Then another classification of the powder, powder actually the powder that will be classified based on the particle size and also what will be the relative density of that particles compared to the you know fluid or in a uh, liquid mixer okay, or gaseous mixer. So, they are here powders classification as per that Gelders this particles can be classified into 4 types like C A here it will be B C A B D C A B D. Okay. So, C means here cohesive type particles whose uh, you know uh, size range will be okay, uh, within this range and then A type here it will be within this range and then B type this will be within range and D type more than 2000 uh, you know micrometer in diameter whereas you will see that they are you know density difference will be this. So, any where if you consider if suppose any you know powder particle size come within this certain range then you can assess what will be the density difference of that particle and what will be the particle size. So, accordingly you can say whether it is A type, B type or C type or D type. Okay. C type means cohesive type that means here very fine particles are there intermolecular attraction will be very high that is why the particles will be you know clogging to each other okay, agglomerate to each other. So, that is why it is called C type particles that means here cohesive type particles. Then A type particles it is aerated that means this particles size range in such way that it will be easily aerated through the you know gap of these particles air can be passed easily. And then you know that B type particles it is bubbling type particles that means if you use these particles uh, for fluidization you will see that the bubbles will form that is why this type of particles is called the bubbling type particles. And then for drying or some polyethylene production the particle size to be used as a D type particle whose size range will be you know that more than 200 micrometer. Okay. So, here A type that means aeratable like FCC catalyst, B type bubbles like 500 micrometer like sand, C cohesive like floor, fly ash, D spoutable like wheat 2000 micrometer ranges. Okay. Another type of you know powder classification is called according to Research and Brown 1972, 5 categories of powders are there. Some will be ultra fine powder, some will be super fine powder and some will be you know that uh, granular powder and some will be you know uh, broken solid. So, here it is given you know 0.1 to 1 micrometer range that will be called as ultra fine powder. If the powder particles within uh, 1 to 10 micrometer it will be called a super fine powder and uh, if it is uh, size range is 10 to 100 micrometer it will be called as granular powder and its size is 0 0.1 to 3 millimeter then it will be called as you know granular solid whereas 3 to 10 millimeter size it will be called as broken solid. Okay. So, as per research and brown this uh, classification of the powder okay, given. So, you have to know these things what are the different types of 
you know powder as per the particle size. Then coming to that zeta potential, it is actually the measure of the magnitude of the electrostatic or charge repulsion or attraction between particles in a liquid suspension. Suppose two particles suspended in a liquid suspension okay, and they are interacting to each other, they may have they may have some you know charge, if they are opposite charge then you will see that that will be you know attracting to each other, if the same ion or same charge then they will be repulsing from each other. So, because of that the particles will be dispersing to come to each other or diverge to each other okay, or away from the each other because of that charge and that you know uh, dispersity can be assessed by this zeta potential. Okay. So, it is one of the key parameters known to affect dispersion stability. It can be applied to improve the formulation of dispersions, emulsions and suspensions. How that zeta potential to be defined? How to calculate that zeta potential? The zeta potential can be estimated by Smolosowski's equation. You have to remember this. Here, j is equal to mu e eta by epsilon into epsilon 0. What is this epsilon? Epsilon is called zeta potential. Mu e is basically what is that? You know, electrophoretic mobility. That means, if suppose two electrodes are kept in a solution and then particles with a certain charge, you will see that there will be mobility of the particle either to the positive or negative electrode. So, the electrophoretic mobility will be there of that particle. Then eta, eta is the dynamic viscosity of that solution and then epsilon is basically the dielectric constant of the dispersion medium, epsilon 0 is the permittivity of the free space and uh, another point is mu e that is mobility that will be expressed by you know that depends on actually speed of the particle and also voltage, what is the voltage applied in the solution by that positive and uh, negative electrode they are what will be the potential difference and also what is the distance between the electrodes. So, this mobility electrophoretic mobility depends on that speed of the particles even voltage and the distance of the electrode as shown in the picture here. Okay. So, mu e will be equal to what that v small here v is basically the velocity or speed of the particle and capital V is the voltage and here capital L is basically the distance of electrode. Okay. So, from which you can easily calculate what will be the zeta potential. Now, after getting the value of zeta potential, let us see what is happening, what how can then uh, we uh, actually assess or what is the stability of that you know solution or suspension. Okay. So, in this case uh, the absolute value of the zeta potential is larger, many colloidal particles show good dispersibility as the electrostatic repulsion becomes stronger. However, as the zeta potential registers close to 0, the particles become unstable and are likely to aggregate. So, the stability behavior of the colloid suspension based on the zeta potential can be assessed based on this range. If your zeta potential range will be within to 0 to plus minus 5 in millivoltage, then you can say that the particles will be agglomerated or coagulated to each other in the suspension. If your zeta potential will be within a range of plus minus 10 to plus minus 30 millivolt, then it will be called as incipient instability. Moderate instability will be assessed by that you know zeta potential value within the plus minus 30 to plus minus 40 and excellent stability will be having if your zeta potential value coming greater than you know plus minus 61 then you can say that there will be excellent stability of the particles in the suspension. Another important uh, you know parameter which is to be known for assessing any you know that uh, performance of the you know process they are sometimes use that slurry to be transported from one position to the another position, slurry may be used for the uh, reaction uh, with the you know gaseous medium. So, there 
uh, you need to know what will be the density of the slurry, you need to know what will be the viscosity of the slurry, effective viscosity of the slurry. So, for that how to calculate the slurry density and slurry concentration and also viscosity that you have to know. So, slurry is a mixture of solid and a liquid, the density of a slurry can be calculated as like this here the formula is given the rho m what is the density of that mixer that means solid and liquid this is 100 divided by Cw by rho s plus 100 minus Cw by rho l. What is Cw? Cw is basically concentration of the slurry by weight in the slurry that means what is the weight percentage of the particles in the slurry. Rho s is the solid density and rho l is the density of the liquid in which that slurry is made. So, Cw that means slurry concentration can be calculated by the ratio of weight of the dry solid upon you know that total weight of the dry solid as well as liquid. Okay. So, here as per this equation you can calculate what will be the slurry concentration. Let us do an example, it is said that a slurry consists of raw magnetite in a carboxymethyl cellulose solution of density 1600 kg per meter cube okay. and from the measurement it was observed that the slurry weights is 2537 kg per meter cube. Now, calculate the concentration of solids by weight. Here the density of the magnetite is given as 7874 kg per meter cube. You know that the mixer density is expressed as by this equation 100 by Cw by rho s plus 100 minus Cw by rho l. Now, you know this rho m that means mixer density it is given slurry weights is 2537 kg per meter cube. So, it is there, but Cw is not given to you which is to be you know calculated. So, Cw is unknown here whereas, rho s is known to you, rho l is known to you rho s is given as 7874 and rho l is given 1600 kg per meter cube. So, after substitution of this rho s, rho l and rho m from this equation and solving you will get this you know C w that means concentration of the you know slurry. So, it is coming as 46.35 percent. Then slurry viscosity you will see whenever you add some particles on the uh, liquid you will see that the it is is you know viscosity your stickiness uh, will be the particles uh, that means slurry stickiness will be increasing because of that increasing viscosity. Now, what will be that viscosity how to calculate that viscosity if you have some concentration of the particles or add some particles or some amount of particles will be added into the liquid. So, in that case if you have the extremely low concentrations of fine particles if your value is less than phi is equal to 0 0.1 that means 10 percent less than 10 percent you can say and low shear stress that means 1 kilo Pascal then as per Einstein's equation you can you know calculate this slurry viscosity as mu L into 1 plus 2.5 into epsilon s. In case of higher concentration phi is equal to 0 0.1 that means more than 10 percent and low shear stress that means 1 kPa less than 1 kPa then given by Thomas that slurry you know viscosity can be calculated by this equation which is a function of slurry concentration. In case of high shear stress and high concentration Kitano et al 1981 they have given another equation they have suggested another equation to calculate the effective viscosity of the polymer smelt of smooth spherical particle this is equal to phi s will be equal to mu l into 1 minus epsilon s by 0 0.68 to the power minus 2, whereas epsilon is volume fraction of the solid in the slurry and mu l is the you know viscosity of the pure liquid in which you are making the slurry. Let us do an example here an experimental results the density of a slurry is 1620 kg per meter cube, the density of particle of slurry is 2080 kg per meter cube and that of liquid in which the slurry is made is 1281 kg per meter cube. The viscosity of the liquid is given at 20 degree Celsius as 0 0.001 Pascal second. Now, you have to calculate what will be the concentration of the solid by volume and the viscosity of the slurry. So, concentration okay, 
you have to calculate as well as viscosity. So, first of all you have to calculate what will be the concentration. So, concentration can be calculated by this equation that earlier we have you know calculated from this equation. So, here also C w is coming 54.63 percentage. Now, assume 100 kg slurry is there then weight of solid in it will be 54.60 kg as per this. Now, so volume fraction will be epsilon s which is equal to epsilon s is equal to what is that you have to convert it to you know that volume fraction. So, 54.60 divided by 2080 you are actually dividing by what is that 2080 is what it is basically the particle density of the particle and the slurry this is 2080 and then divided by 100 divided by 1620. So, this will be your you know that slurry volume total slurry volume and this will be your what is that particle volume. So, you are getting here 0 0.425. So, here it is seen that its value is more than 10 percent. So, we can easily you know use this equation where the phi s value is more than 10 percent. Okay. So, here we can use this equation to calculate the slurry viscosity. So, after substitution of value of epsilon s and mu l okay, then you can easily have this value of viscosity of the slurry as 0 0.00388 Pascal second. So, in this way you can easily calculate I think you understood this example once you know this equation okay, you try to you know remember this equation at least Einstein equation you can easily remember. Okay. So, based on which you can easily calculate what will be the effective density. So, I think you understood what is the properties of the particle, what is the shape of the particles and what is the zeta potential and how to calculate the slurry density and slurry viscosity and slurry concentration. Okay. Please go through this lecture notes once again and try to understand if you have any uh, doubt you can directly mail to me uh, I can clarify it. Okay. So, in the next lecture we will discuss about particle size and its distribution also uh, we will discuss the mean particle size in a you know uh, mixer okay, and its distribution. So, thank you have a nice day thank you. Mm -hmm.